Hello, this is Solar PBTV from Rest for Africa launch event from Nairobi, Kenya. And now we are with a very important person because the person who is bringing money and without money we cannot make anything. So Katrin Collin, she's in charge of uh, investments in the Eastern Africa at uh, European Investment Bank. So hello, bonjour. Bonjour, good, good afternoon. <laughs> so Colin, uh, we had a very, very short chat before our interview and we were discussing about quite impressive actually involvement of the, of the bank here in Africa. Could you tell us more about involvement in the energy, but especially in the particular in the renewable energies here in the region? Okay, so as you mentioned, I represent the European, European Investment Bank here in Eastern Africa. Uh, I hope your spectators know that the European Investment bank is uh, the EU uh, long-term financing arm I mean so its member states are the 28 members of the European Union it is based in Luxembourg and it operates globally in over 160 countries um, it lends last year it lended 75 78 close to 78 billion euro globally out of which uh, about uh, just under 8 billion went outside the European Union because the main focus is certainly European Union but EIB is also a large player outside the European Union including in Africa where we've been operating since 1963 as a matter of fact. So in order to support time. the policy of the European communities. Yes. yes, indeed. So our objective is really to support the EU policy within the European Union and also in its action outside the European Union being their essentially development cooperation policies. So in, in Africa, I mean, uh, I would say about 25% of our lending goes to the energy sector. Uh, and if we look globally, uh, last year EIB uh, lended about 20, 12 billion to the energy sector globally and 41% of this actually went to renewable energy and energy efficiency. So clearly there is a very big focus on, on energy efficiency, renewable energy, and this is part of the global agenda of climate action, which is a top priority for the EIB as it is for the EU. And uh, last year in, in uh, Lima, the EIB announced that in future, outside the EU, we would target 35% of our lending for climate action related uh, initiatives, So, which is a very ambitious target. Uh, now looking a bit closer as where we are now, um, in Kenya, for instance, we've been supporting the energy sector, and this is essentially renewable energy uh, since uh, the early 80s. 45% uh, of our portfolio here in, in, in the country targets the energy sector, and we operate both with the public and the private sector. Oh, so it's so not only public? No, 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 no. We, are, we have various uh, diverse instruments that allow us to, to lend to the public sector, and an example here is uh, Kengen, the, the, power pro the main uh, power producing company, and the geothermal uh, Olkaria site, which everybody knows in Kenya, and which I would recommend that you visit because it's very impressive. So we've been uh, uh, supporting them, but we are also active on the private sector side and EIB is actually one of the, the senior and largest lender in the Lake Turkana wind power project, uh, which is a flagship for Kenya, but also for the region and I think for Africa in terms of wind power production. And uh, we have contributed 200 million euro out of a total cost of 600 million. So that's quite relevant. And we've also mobilized grant from the EU, which has been put as preferred equity. So we can play with the various instruments and the blending, as it is called now, by mixing loans and grants to support uh, renewable energy in particular, public sector, private sector. We are looking now at a number of IPPs where we would be su uh, supporting them as well, including solar IPPs, although solar in Kenya has not yet... Uh, but in the future say. it will be the main. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have a lot of geothermal, so I mean it will be interesting to see. Uh, but I think so voila, I think that that's, that's a bit of a presentation. We are also active uh, on the smaller scale, because all these I mentioned are quite large scale mm -hmm. projects. On the smaller scale, we are also quite active through in investment funds or funds of funds like GRF, which is a European instrument which EIB is managing. And these instruments allow actually to inject equity in funds who then in turn are developing IPPs and then we can then come thereafter on the debt side to inject loans 
uh, directly. So, and we also are invested in funds which then target smaller scale. Mm -hmm. uh, which is also important uh, yeah, for exactly. Africa. Exactly, and, and so that's, uh, that's, that's also another way for us to intervene, or as well through lines of credit, because we support the financial sector so that they can on lend to small and medium enterprises. And you will see actually that very often these small and medium enterprises, they will install solar panel on their, on their roof or uh, action like that one that actually is putting, put all together, also contributing to the objective. So, Katrin, a few weeks ago we spoke uh, with uh, Vice President of the European Commission, um, with uh, Maros uh, Zavkovic, and uh, he was mentioning that one of the, uh, let's say, the most important points in the agenda of the energy policy of Europe is to help in development of energy projects in Africa. Do you also feel, in terms of money coming uh, here to the market through your institution, and how it will uh, develop in the future? I think energy has been a priority, remains a priority and will continue to be a priority, especially renewable energy. Uh, we see it here, we see it in the region and I know my, my colleagues who are based elsewhere, elsewhere in, in, in Africa see it as well. I mean, we, we have clear priorities, we have a clear agenda, climate change and we are clearly being told by head office. You know, this is where you have to go and this is what you have to promote. I think here the Kenya offers great potential mm -hmm. and it's, that's why it's very nice to be here and to contribute to this exercise and to participate. And I have to say that an initiative like this one, West for Africa, it's very interesting because there are still a number of challenges. Even though, you know, things have moved, there are challenges. It's difficult to attract private sector. There are still obstacles. And I think Which one? Uh, well, I think, you know, uh, in here, in this country, uh, so far, land is a major issue. Mm -hmm. I think it's been discussed this morning. So, land, and as uh, the gentleman from Lake Turkana mentioned, it it's a very insensitive issue. So, it does require some local knowledge mm -hmm. and a very good knowledge of the legislation. And also commitment of local people. And engagement with the people so that there is some kind of buy-in from the local communities in terms of what they can get out of it. I think on the regulation, I mean, there are still ways to go. We discussed the energy bill this morning. We will see how it will be implemented. Uh, but yes, there are a few things. I will not tell you everything now because we will discuss it afterwards. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, last question uh, with regards to the other markets. Yes, because you are in charge not only of Kenya, but quite mm -hmm. a lot of markets. So from your perspective, uh, let's say the person to whom everybody is coming for money. Yes, we are the first person, let's say, who knows uh, what's, happening, mm -hmm. what, what's happening in the air, I would say, yes. So which are the next countries which will be the uh, future solar or uh, renewable energy countries here in, in your area? Yeah, well, I think this region is, is kind of blessed by the fact that his, this, it has this, as it was mentioned, the sun, mm -hmm. some area, the wind, the geothermal potential, which is huge. And Kenya has made the best out of it, but you have Ethiopia that's coming, Hopefully, the situation in Ethiopia will stabilize so that they can continue on the good path that they had engaged on. Uh, I think Tanzania has also some very good prospects. Uh, Rwanda also, I mean, also the economy there is, is smaller, but still for smaller scale projects, there are good prospects. I mean, the whole region has the potential. I think at the moment, Kenya is the one that has made the best out of it, but I think we are really looking to support and my own view from being here is that Kenya has a lot to bring to the others. So it can be like a kind of hub. Voilà, exactly. And then other countries can also um, use the experience from the country in order to push the renewables. Because that's one thing that is also very impressive here. When you go and, and visit, uh, for instance, uh, Kenjen, the, the public, uh, the, all the staff, the management, the technical staff are excellent quality and they are all Kenyans. Uh, and I think that's an, an important element to be brought because that means that somehow there has been some success in transferring the knowledge and getting the knowledge here locally. So it looks, uh, Katrin, that you will have a lot of work and you will need some new stuff, yes? <laughs> well, then I, if you can pass the message to my headquarters, that would be very <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, no, thank you so much and uh, really uh, thank you for supporting renewables and also solar energy here in the region. And uh, hopefully we'll meet also in other markets, yes, other countries. With pleasure. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. That was Solar PV TV together with uh, Katrin Collin, who is in charge of uh, Eastern Africa within the uh, European Investment Bank the bank which is bringing money, real money, to the projects here.